I'd like to start making some videos where I share my favourite parts from lots of jazz songs. And I thought I'd start with this one, uh, All My Tomorrows. Section A has a lovely melody and uh, the chord progression is very traditional. And there's a couple of like quirky things about it that I thought you might like. And uh, whatever I talk about in these videos, you can, of course, take away and apply to other uh, repertoire. And uh, even maybe go ahead and learn the actual song completely. So it's not they're not going to be full tutorials just little bits of interest and with all my tomorrows the bit of interest is literally section a because it's just so well constructed it sounds like this just see if you can work out what i'm doing before i start explaining it of course just have, have a little listen to this really pretty so what's going on the first part of the melody is very interesting it's interesting to study jazz melody lines without uh, worrying about what key the chord is in as as the chords are changing uh, just learn it in the key of g which which this is written in or whatever key it happens to be in and the melody is going three two three two so you might call the two and nine in jazz but I'll, and the six will be 13 but let me let, just do it in the key of g from one to seven so it's going three two three two three two three flat um 13 flat six and then the same kind of pattern is happening again like this from the two and the one to a flat five so i think that's quite nice it's just using these first three notes and then playing around with the six well the flat six and then the flat five and it's just really pretty uh, i'll talk about the chords in just a moment the next little part uh is the g so the melody is kind of beginning on the b beginning on the A, the 3, and then the 2, the A, and then the 1, the G. So it's very easy to learn it in that way. Playing the F sharp because we're in the key of G. Playing one out of key note, the dominant 7, in the key of G. And then... So 8 to the E there. And then to this flat 6 again. Finishing on the 5. So it's just a really nice kind of pattern walking down from the third over the octave, seven, six, five. Very nice. Really, really nice in terms of note values. And you'll notice these similar note values in lots of jazz, flat 13. Um, etc you know flat nines you're going to see in a moment as we apply the key of the chords which is what i'd like to do now so only the chords not the chord progression it's following the traditional jazz thing of two five ones and you'll see so the first chord is a minor seven which is chord two of g the melody note is the nine that's the next thing about all these nice jazz melodies you will find that the melody note is often a fancy note to embellish a chord and in this case, it is literally the 9. So you, you, you only need to write A minor 7 because the melody note is giving you the 9. So you don't need to write A minor 9. You, you might see A minor 9, but you'll see the note is that 9. So we're getting out of chord 2 next. Now what's the melody playing? First of all, I'm, in, I'm enhancing the chord a bit, but what's the melody playing here? It's a flat 9 in the key of D because now I'm, I'm labelling the note values in the key of the chord, which is a bit more precise, but it's still nice to see the melody in the master key first to see how it was constructed. So it's landing on here, which is the flat 9 of D. So we're hitting a flat 9. And we're gonna, you're going to see that that's going to happen again on the E with an F, which is the flat 9. So lots of flat 9s and 9s in this. Typical jazz stuff. chord is D7, but I'm flattening the 5, which is a nice thing to do when you play a flat 9. It could also maybe be called a sharp 11, 8, 9, 10, 11, sharpened, so you could call it a D sharp 11 flat 9, uh, but let's call it D7 flat 9, flat 5, D7 flat, not flat 5, flat, flat 9, flat 5. That sounds quite nice. And then onto chord one, which is, uh, of course, that's a dominant seven chord, the, the five, of course, the dominant seven, the C. Onto chord one, which is G. Notice the melody is again the nine. It's just there. 
Now look what happens next. The next chord after that, two, five, one. It is doing, in the lead sheet, in the chord chart, it will probably show, the, it does from my memory, it shows the minor as a whole diminished. That happens a lot. It's a jazz thing you need to remember. The minor is often played as a whole diminished. But in a way, that is another way of playing actually a six chord. And of course, everyone knows the two, five, one, the six, two, five, one. In a way, it's doing that because a whole diminished degree, it makes sense. Look in the key of G, we're in the key of G. We're playing a minor, the B flat, whole diminished. A whole diminished chord, <clears throat> in terms of jazz theory, is an inversion of itself four times. So B flat whole diminished is D flat diminished, is E diminished, is G diminished. There's three groups. You've got the, well, they normally start from C. So you've got the C group, which is all of these, interchangeable. The C sharp D flat group, which is what we're on here, the B flat, so B flat's in it. And the D group, which gives you the F and the F flat. So there's three groups, 12 notes, four notes in the chord. Naturally, there's three groups, four, four, four. So the B flat whole diminished is, in a way, the E is in it, which is the sixth of G. But the only thing that this song requires, and I'm going to show you the two differences, is that it does sound a bit better with the B flat in the bass. If I play it with an E in the bass, instead of a B flat, that's why it's called B flat whole diminished and not E diminished, it just sounds a bit different. Let me just go into it, but I'll play the E. No, I'll play the B flat first so it sounds nicer. Listen. B flat coming out. It's quite stable. It's floating. It's a little bit. It, it's a stable, unstable note. It just sounds just right. It's just just balancing there, and then it's gonna fall onto the uh, chord two. But now I'm gonna play it with an E in the bass, which is the same uh, diminished group, but it just sounds a bit more aggressive. You're here. your choice because they're in the same group uh, but traditionally it's written as a B flat in the minor but the, the minor and the f and the sixth as a whole diminished here it is in the key of G they are interchangeable because they're in the same diminished group you could even call it a flat five but you don't really say flat five whole diminished it's normally the minor or the six so after that so that's a nice chord progression two five one to the minor whole diminished or six whole diminished um, and then we're going to go to three Six two five one. It, it's the jazz chord progression, but it just sounds so pretty because of how the melody has been constructed. So we've just done the minor. Now the melody is going on to the G, which is the dominant seven of A, which is the two chord. Now that is the sixth in the key of A, so it sounds quite nice. Minor six chord, nice sound. And then we get to so that was the two chord. Uh, and then it's going to go um, three, six, as I just said, three, six, we've done two, then it's three, six, two, five, one. But here I'm doing that same thing again. I'm playing the, the six chord is an E with a flat five, and here's the flat nine. That's the six chord. So three chord, B minus seven. Six chord, with a flat nine as the melody. Like earlier, it was um, the D7, the flat 5 and the flat 9, now it's the E7. And then 2, 5, 1. E minus 7. D is the 5, with the flat 9 melody again, ending on the 5. So it's just such a pretty melody, it's just so well constructed. And let me just play the chords again. 2. So I went to 8, yeah, 5. Now 1. Minor, whole diminished. Three, six, two, five, one. So it just sounds really, really pretty. Now I'm going to play it just to close and follow the melody. See if you can see if it makes sense compared to how it may not have made sense when I played it at the beginning. So uh, be careful with my, my pole thing. Yeah, I don't know. 
course, every time you play it, it's a little bit different. And it's this is this is how you can play a song how you want to be able to play it because you know the, the chord progression so well. Two five one minor on the hold on the minor chord two up to the three six two five one. It's the jazz chord progression. It's all there, and the melody is based on such lovely notes, the nines and the flat nines. Very very nice song. Section uh, B. Um, I won't go into, but if you find the lead sheet uh, on jazzstudies.us, you'll see it's uh, equally as pleasant, really. I just wanted to make a video on this. And I'm going to do a few more like this uh, into the future. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. There you go. As always, the likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterpeeners and Syllabus, that's Patreon, and all my playlists. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.